Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. I want to talk about the apparitions at El Escorial, known as Prado Nuevo. I visited this apparition site back in, when was it this year? It was something like just after, just during Lent, actually. It was just during Lent, probably the beginning of April this year. And I wanted to give my impressions of visiting the apparition site and then something about the apparitions, my impressions on the, the messages, etc. Because I read this kind of official authorized book on the apparitions, 30 years of history in the pen of a direct witness. So it's a it's an authorized book by by a journalist who who experienced was present during a lot of the phenomena at Prado Nuevo and gives quite a very detailed I mean the book is the book is 465 pages or something long so it was a big read but let's start off with my impressions of the place so I visited the town of El Escorial which is where the you know the what is it like a global heritage site you know the monastery of of San Lorenzo del Escorial is situated so I, I, I obviously visited that beautiful monastery stroke palace built by Philip II. But just down the road, outside of the vicinity of where the, the monastery palace is, about 10 minute walk down the road, you get to the edge of town, what seems like the edge of town, and you get to a bit of a, a, bit of a busy road. Like I don't think it was a dual carriageway but it was a it was a busy road busy main road like you get on the edge of the an a road basically that you get on the the edge uh, of a of a road of a edge of a town uh, so that the town can be bypassed like a bypass busy bypass road so and that's where the apparition site is it's a little field historically speaking this busy bypass road that i'm talking about didn't exist and when the apparitions began, it was a field that was very calm, very tra tranquil, where Our Lady began to appear to Luzampado Cuevas. And, and so I visited the apparition site. Every day there is a public rosary and other prayers at the apparition site. And also there's a mass in a, in a chapel kind of over the road, over the busy road. There's a, make, a makeshift chapel that's been built which is you know it serves a purpose and is is attractive enough inside so my impressions of the place is that when you get there it's nicely kept really nicely kept the the grounds are are really nicely looked after and you find as you enter a kind of shed where there will be someone on duty looking after the place saying hello to visitors there's a little shop there and that's where they also I think run the recording of the daily rosary and the other pious uh, devotions that take place from the shrine. I think it all is orchestrated from that hut. And so I met I met some. I don't want to talk too much about the people I met because you know they were they were human encounters with people, and I don't want to say too much about about individuals. But I've got to say that the people I met there were genuine pious Catholics, true Catholics who had put up with a lot of rubbish from like everyone has with all the corona stuff and and all the restrictions and a lot of difficulties we've all experienced this and we've all struggled with this and these people very faithful to very faithful catholics very sincere catholics who are clearly extremely obedient to the local bishop all the the things all the pious actions which take place at Prado Nuevo are with the approval of the Darson bishop Madrid the diocese has given their approval for devotions to take place at the shrine and the diocese has given approval for an association to support the shrine and another other pious works linked to the shrine which I'm going to mention. I want to try and keep this video short and brief so I can make some key points. So key points, the people I met there really friendly, really good natured, they were all keen obviously to talk about the apparitions with me, to talk about the importance of this particular sanctuary, how Our Lady had said that if a sanctuary was built, if a church was built in this location, there would be healings, there would be conversions. 
and that the waters would be curative. Already the waters have been curative in some ways, but the many promises that we find in the messages linked to the to the location are conditional on a on a chapel being built. Rather controversially, there was a little chapel built there, but not according to the specifications of Our Lady during the apparitions. And actually, that chapel was pulled down by the local authorities, I think for lacking due planning permission. But it seemed like it seemed like ultimately the the people that are, are real followers of the apparitions, I think they always understood that that was a kind of temporary a temporary site because that site didn't really meet the exact specifications of Our Lady as to how she wanted the chapel to be. So I met some I met some people that were clearly dedicated to the apparitions, and in fact, very kindly, very kindly, the the uh, individuals who were looking after the shrine they invited me back to the residence of the community, one of the residences attached to. Prado Nuevo. Here I need to explain something. If you've watched some of the other videos, you may know this already. But one of the things Luthamparo received from our Lord was that Catholics should try and live, or at least though at least it will be really good if Catholics tried to live like the first uh, first disciples, i.e., living in common, living in houses where there are a lot of people there, living a rule of life living very um, without materialism, living really the faith 100% without property individually owned, with a chapel in the midst of their of their compound, etc. And this has occurred. There are a number of there are a number of individuals who have joined this community linked to the work La Obra of Prado Nuevo. There are a number of individuals who have joined it. I think probably from what I remember, oh, I wish I, I wish I had my notes taken down with me right now. I think it was something like, I think it was something like in the community I visited, there were about 40 individuals living there, 20 of which were, were youngsters under 18. And there are, I think three or four of these communities in the vicinity, in the environment, environs of Madrid, I think mainly. So, so I was invited over to this house where where the community is. And if you if you speak Spanish or listen to Spanish, you'll hear that there's some controversy about this community. You know, some people say, "Oh, yes, it's a luxury compound and they are they are living it up." But look at this chalet. The word chalet in Spanish is a kind of like we would call like a I don't know, a country house or a resort. But and also there are claims all oh, people are people are being forced uh, when they join to give all their money over to the to the group. My impression from visiting the place, number one, it was a very simple life when I got there and there was really no planning. I they, they invited me on the spur of the moment to come and visit them. And so there was no preparation for to kind of present a good front, you know, and it was it was a really lovely atmosphere. Everyone was gathered, or most of the people, a lot of people living there who were not out of work or, or whatever, studying or something. They were downstairs in a main area, which was pretty big, where there were people sitting in chairs. Children were playing. There were some female uh, residents doing a bit of uh, w repairs, sewing, and they were doing some other practical things. And some of the members had been making the dinner that night. It was their turn. There's lots of turns, lots of rotors. And... And they were really pleased to meet me, to talk to me, to share their experiences of what it was like knowing Luthamparo. And I got to say, I got no impression that anyone there was in any way, certainly the people I met, the adults I met were really of sound mind. There was no one there that seemed to be, you know, in any way against their will there. And they were all delighted to be there and with intelligent conversation and the place wasn't luxury. It was very, very basic, very, very, very standard. In fact, it was clear that they were living the spirit of the early Christians. The chapel was nicely kept, uh, the statues, the sacristy, all nicely kept. And they have a rule of life there and daily prayers, rosaries and devotions. So the community seemed really authentic. It seemed really authentic. That's one of the things that 
Our Lady asked Luthamparo to set up, through these apparitions, this community of individuals who would live uh, the Catholic faith in a, in a kind of way like the early the early Christians. And like I said, they're clearly faithful to uh, Humanae Vitae, etc., because they have big families there, and they are they are families that are brought up in an environment that's very Catholic. I should say, I asked a few questions, and they said, of course, although it's a communal uh, living. If you're in a little family unit, there is a there is some um, division. So you and your children uh, do have a, a bit of a division in the house where you are. Obviously, you know you, you and your wife share the same bedroom, but and and obviously the, your children are together. But for singles that happen to be members of the community, they sleep in dormitories and they rotate the rooms and even even their families rotate what rooms they're living in occasionally so that they don't get too attached anyway i don't want to say too much about the house it was really seemed really exemplary and while i was there the enthusiasm for the members to tell me about their encounters with luthamparo what i really got to say that everyone there was had really been touched by her and this is so hard to convey in speech, but this is also in the book, that people that met her, a woman of really, really little learning, very simple lady, very humble lady, uneducated lady, she was extremely striking. You know, she was gifted, that really incredibly so, that people would be struck by the wisdom that she produced, the insight she'd have into the state of your soul, the knowledge that she would have, the, the, the counsel that she was able to give, the miracles, the ecstasies, the, the, a big one were the stigmatas that she experienced very spontaneously. And this is when I went to get to the next thing, because I was so, so privileged when I was there to meet some of the primary, primary people, primary eyewitnesses from the beginning of the apparitions. In fact, I met, I met the two individuals were the first ones to know that Luthampado was a stig stigmatist. I met the two initial witnesses who were children at the time and who now, they, now they, one of them is, is a religious sister and I was able to meet her and the other is completely a member of the community and his life has been given over to the work of Prado Nuevo. There's no sense that anyone directly linked to the, linked to these apparitions has had anything but the cross and a life ordered towards our Lord and, and our Blessed Lady and living the Catholic faith in the heart of the church, you know, getting involved with activities of the diocese. They were really involved with World Youth Day Madrid. They were, they've been involved in, in a lot of works for the, the Archbishop, the Cardinal, supporting him in, in various charitable outreaches. And like I said, becoming religious, becoming priests and religious, many of the people that were were part of the families that were directly linked to Luthamparo. And so anyway, I got to visit, accompanied by the initial, or the second, the initial eyewitnesses is in the comment, like I said, but her brother was able to be accompanied by him to the location, the flat, where the stigmatas were taking place. And he was able to give me an amazing, I mean, it was so generous of him so generous of him i'm so grateful to him because what an experience going to that house that flat which is still owned by the by the uh, the work of prada nuevo or perhaps by him and his perhaps yeah will be owned by the work of prada nuevo now so i was able to go to the flat and see the places and the flat's a kind of museum because there are little cards little signs around the flat telling you of the locations with various things happened he was an eyewitness to so many incredible things of of Luthamparo just breaking out in blood pouring out of her head all of a sudden or Luthamparo saying things that she had no way of knowing multiplication of foods Luthamparo by location he was the eyewitness of so many things and and like like his sister was and and those immediately linked to the family and all of them are still linked to the apparitions 
the like the apparition sight and the, the work that Our Lady asked of Luthampado, i.e., the community of living in common. There's the other part of the work is the community of religious sisters, of which of which this original eyewitness is a member. And there are a lot of girls that have become members of this religious community. It sounded to me like there were something like 80, 80 girls had become members of this religious order. Incredibly. You think about how many, how, how short is there are, or is of vocations. 80 women, girls, mainly linked to the families that have been part of the community. They're girls giving their lives to poverty, justice, obedience, in looking after the elderly, basically, in in nursing homes, charitable nursing homes for 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 um for pe for all kinds of individuals. But it seemed like a lot of them were obviously individuals that wanted a nursing home that was super Catholic. Because the nursing homes I got to visit a nursing home and I got to meet this sister, uh, who was the initial eyewitness. What a beautiful lady she was. I could see that she was was really glowing. She seemed to be really glowing with love of our Lord and and really profound gratitude for having in Almighty God's providence had this friendship, this this closeness to Luthampado, who basically had shown her, had had called her onwards to embrace the religious life. And and this lady had flourished in religious life, as had many other young women who had met Luthampado in the early days of the apparitions. She had inspired them to seek the higher, the higher calling of the consecrated virginity. And this order of religious sisters is fully approved by the diocese. It's an institute of the diocese. And they have a number of locations where they have their nursing homes not just in, in the Madrid diocese, but it seemed to me in the environs of, of Castiglione, there were a number of other monastery stroke nursing homes that they were they were running. So it seemed like the charitable side of Prado Nuevo is absolutely evident. There was a lot of, it seemed like when I was speaking to the members, the people in the community, that their minds were really focused on, on doing charitable works charitable works for others and also also in terms of growing in holiness so i was really impressed by i was impressed by the community i was impressed by the religious sisters and i was impressed by the the generosity of them wanting to take me allowing me to see this this flat which i've got to say there was an aura about the flat especially the bedroom where luthampado had experienced so many of the the passions, the stigmatas, really, really an incredible gift for me to be able to to go there. And I'm so grateful to them. So what of the the messages and some of the things I read in in the book, the really long book. So the messages I've got to say are at times quite strong. They're quite strong, quite um, frightening at some times, talking about talking about many of the, the evils facing the church, warnings, uh, warnings to all Christians to live Catholics, to live their faith properly, talking about coming chastisements. I don't want to talk about the prophetic side of Pride and Weber in this video. Perhaps another video I'll talk about some of the prophetic side of the apparitions. But the overall message, because Our Lady gave loads of messages to Luthampado. We're talking um, hundreds, perhaps thousands of messages every first Saturday for about 20 years off the top of my head. She's receiving messages and sometimes on other occasions too. And some of them are quite lengthy messages, not just one liners, but they're, they're fairly lengthy messages that she would, that she would give. So she would often talk about the the graces that were available on making the five first Saturdays, the, the first Saturdays full stop, the importance of receiving Holy Communion devoutly. It seems like everyone involved in the community receives Holy Communion kneeling down on the tongue. That seems to be obviously part of the message of, of Luthampado about reverence towards the Blessed Sacrament. Um, let's see, the power of the 
the rosary is it features in the messages also a real call for religious souls to live their religious consecration fully there are some unusual things in the apparitions one of the unusual things is that occasionally occasionally Luthampado in the apparitions not only heard and spoke with our lord our lady but sometimes with some departed souls for example some souls who were in hell communicated with her and were ordered to reveal to her what it was like in hell also Luthampado's own son who passed away rather mysteriously the book talks a little bit about the circumstances around his death but she but he who had been a bit of, bit of a tormented soul in his life he had made it into heaven and was able to talk to his mother in an apparition so i mean the apparitions face so much persecution from the state from the church a little bit from the local parish priest but from the state more than anything the local mayor was really against the apparitions he was the one that got this big main road built through the middle of the apparition field because the field was kind of it was basically common land but it did have an owner and that owner that owner wanted wanted money basically when the apparitions happened this owner got a little bit a little bit worldly and materialistic um and wanted loads of money for the field which was really not worth much at all and the local government were going to give money and the local government said they wanted to build a sports complex there you know and at one point the local government put a big wall around the apparition site so no one was able to go near it they put they got the police in to to make sure no one went into where the apparitions were on one occasion it seems like people linked i don't want to say i don't want to make any um false accusation i'll just say on one occasion some individuals who were opposed to the apparitions arrived and they beat up the seer Luthampado when she was there on her own they beat her up they not only did that they stripped her off all stripped her of all her clothes and they beat her till she was nearly dead she after this thankfully her husband turned up and they scrammed but she was left in a very bad way and was in hospital for a number of days and she forgave obviously she forgave her attackers my goodness there was so much opposition to these apparitions from from locals and from the state that the local parish priest who was opposed to the apparitions in the end he came round and and as he was dying he asked the forgiveness of of Luthampado and and thanked the those that devoted to the apparitions because they didn't they continued to support him even though he had been so against the apparitions for so long so these are some initial impressions of the apparitions there are some strange things like i said there are some things i find unusual with the apparitions i find it always unusual where there are really long messages for some reason i, I always find that strange but what i can say from the people i met from the family community it seems like luthampado was a tremendously inspired woman who was clearly in contact with the divine with our lord with our lady with the guardian angels it seems it's, it's the only way there seems to be no sense to me that she could possibly be fraudulent because and and there's no sense that there's an ongoing sham ongoing ongoing scam because to whose benefit all the people in that community are living living pretty hard christian life it's not like they are living living uh it's not like they they're not talking the talk and walking the walk they are and so it's and some of them have come become sisters those who were direct witnesses they've given up all their money they've they've joined these communities it really seemed to me like like Luz Amparo had a striking impact on individuals and I mean what it would have been like to to have met her I could only get an, a glimpse from the glint in the eyes of all those in that family community and i thought to myself a big challenge in that family community will be inspiring the next generation that didn't know luthampado i think in the next years there will be a chapel built at the apparition site 
and it will it will probably grow in popularity or grow in popularity it has kind of passed some of its glory days because if you read back in this book it says that back when Luthampara was alive on the first Saturdays you could have 40,000 people in attendance a little cottage industry grew up around all those people coming people selling gifts selling snacks uh, selling all kinds of probably little things to, to protect you from the rain because it does seem to rain quite a lot in that valley where the the uh, apparition site is so these are my impressions of the apparitions so far my videos on these apparitions haven't been that popular so you know if there are questions you have let me know in the comments maybe i will do another video on these apparitions if there is more interest but there you go if you are interested in visiting it's not far from Madrid. You can get a train from Madrid. It's on the Cercanías uh, route from Madrid. You can get there pretty quickly. I think it was under an hour. There's plenty of nice places to stay in El Escorial and basic places to stay. You can visit the Valley of the Fallen, which is just around the corner, which is an impressive monument in its own right. Really awesome. So there's some thoughts on the apparitions at Prado Nuevo. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.